Hey everybody, and welcome back to Hashtag Corp Stat Chat. This is episode three, where we're gonna talk about population versus sample space. Uh, this is a crucial topic for your understanding of statistics and realizing that there are two ways to problem solve when you encounter a certain problem or when you're ready to conduct an experiment. So population and sample space, to get this started, let's go ahead and diagram it a little bit. So. This is the entire population of people, right? This is the entire world, right? And I want to sort of, I want to find something about this, about these people. So I'm going to look at their height, right? It's a, it's a very numerical uh, way to analyze just people in general. So let's look at the height. So that is going to be the variable that we're going to be discussing. So the height of something, and uh, that's going to be determined by the population. So I'm going to go around, I'm going to ask everybody what their height is. Everybody. We're talking about the planet here, right? Can I do that? Sure, but it's going to take a while and there's like 30,000 people born like every minute and then there's like 30,000 people dying every minute. So I can't really go about find the population by doing that because I can't do it instantaneously for everybody in the population. So what would be sort of a way that I could do this to get a general idea? And that's where the sample space comes in. So instead of looking at the entire population of people in the world, I'm just going to look at this, that little area right there, because this area is a lot easier to cover than the entire population. So this is called the Sample. I'm taking a sample of the population. So the population is everything or everybody that is included or everything that's included in your statistical study um, or statistical experiment. But the sample is what we're going to actually look at because the sample gives us a sample of the population. So a small segment, a small subset of what that population is. Now, what are some of the pitfalls that sort of arise with this though? So say that I'm looking at the sample, and my sample is going to be the height of NBA, NBA players. Okay, so I just took a sample, and the sample of the entire population I'm picking NBA. What's the problem? That should give us a rough estimate, right? No, right? Sample has to give a generalization of everything, and that's where sampling techniques come into play. There's a bunch of them that we can talk about. There's cluster sampling, multi-stage sampling. There's the simple random sample. Um, there's uh, systematic sampling, which we'll talk about later on. We'll talk about all of those techniques. But to get the idea here, sample space has to give a good representation of the entire population. Otherwise, the data is, is, isn't valid. We can't use it, we can just chuck it out the window. Because the sample space can't be NBA players because what's gonna happen to the data? It's gonna be skewed, okay? So I can't just pick a sample space that's very controlled, right? I need something that'll give me a, a, a little picture of the entire population. And that's where simple random sampling comes into play because it's not biased. I can't just select the people that I want. It's systematic. It's um, proven to give me a better understanding of the population. Now with that being said, can random sampling end up leading you down the wrong, wrong path? Absolutely. Randomly, you could select the tallest people, right? So you got to keep that in, in perspective. There is a, there's a margin of error that comes with taking a sample. In addition, when we start talking about the formulas to uh, calculate mean or standard deviation or variance of population versus sample, they're a little bit different. We have to take into account that error when we're talking about a sample. So again, just as a recap, population is the entire, entire group that you're trying to study. So if you're looking at, not the height, but let's say the IQ of everyone on Twitter. So the IQ of every single person on Twitter. Now I can't go through and give a survey to every single person on Twitter because there's literally millions of people who are using it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sample. Now my sample, instantly I think, okay, well I'll just send all these direct messages to all my followers. All right, well, that's going to give you a skewed sample. So to really give a generalization of the population 
or a snapshot of the population, we can't just go off of what's convenient, which is another type of sampling. So there are so many factors that are involved when you're conducting an experiment or trying to gather um, statistical evidence to prove a certain hypothesis or statement. So just remember this, population is everything, sample is just a small section of the population. So hopefully this Venn diagram helps you out. I know that it's uh, pretty awesome. That's right. So again, population, big stuff, sample, really, really small set of data that's involved to give a snapshot of the population. And we'll talk about sampling techniques later on and how that's going to impact our population and sample space uh, formulas that derive from these. Um, and we'll go from there. So. Thanks for watching. This is Population versus Sample Space. Hopefully you learned a few things. Again, Mr. Corb here signing off. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and like and subscribe me on YouTube. All right. Peace out. Talk to you later.